Hello, hello. I always am hoping I'm in the right spot, so I am just going to check because it's super awkward. I know you guys know it's super awkward when you are live and you're like in your flow and you got your mojo going and then all of a sudden your husband or your friend is like, I'm not really sure what you're talking about, but I think you're in the wrong spot. <laughs> That's the best. So I'm going to wait for some people to jump on and because um, it seems like Facebook takes about a minute and 30 seconds, so like 90 seconds to notify people when you are live, which come on, like that is so long. Um, so sometimes, so I'm on my iPad and sometimes I can see comments and sometimes I cannot. So, oh, I saw your comment, Kelly. What up, girlfriend? So I am so excited and so pumped that I get the opportunity to do this. Hey, Christy. So thanks, Lisa, for um, letting us schedule some hump day hustles so we can talk to each other and share wisdom. And I have crazy hair today, so I apologize. Um, so since there are people jumping on, I will start by telling you my name's Amanda Larson, and I am a senior executive right now. I've been with Jamberry since March of 2014, so March, no, that's a lie. I did my first party in March, but I actually joined in April of 2014, and so three years, and have been just loving this. So my story started with a product addiction. I loved, love, love the nail wraps, and this was the only thing that prevented me from biting my nails. Then what went from product addiction quickly turned into... Um, kind of this success obsession with wanting to get out of my day job. I hated my day job and I wanted to do anything possible to get out. Like I dreaded getting up. I was like the worst wife ever in the morning and I blamed it on no coffee, but really it was just because I was so mad that my husband loved what he did and I hated going to work every day. I would commute not very far, like 15 minutes, but I would road rage. Like I'm talking throwing all the hand signals, saying every bad word in the book, and would get to work and be there for eight to 10 hours. And the only thing that would really get me through the day was Chamberry. I would be like sneaking in the corner of the office, like posting on my team page or going, you know, we didn't have live then. So I'd be going in the car on my lunch and posting in my parties. And then I would come home and my husband would be like, how were your disappointments? That's what we called my appointments at work, you guys. That's how much I hated it and how much of a joke it was. Like, I would go on these appointments and they were disappointments. Like, they sucked. So, this life, even no matter how hard it can be some days where, or some months where you're like, I don't know how I'm going to, you know, if you're, this is your full-time job and you pay your bills with this money, sometimes you can be like, okay, well, it's going to be a little tight next month, but it's way better than doing all that business of getting up, being in a bad mood, commuting and all of that. So I've seen some of your guys' posts. This is like a side tangent, but it can be, it can be worse. So be super grateful for where you're at today. And just focus on where you're going to be tomorrow. Because if you focus on where you were in 2015 and 2016, it's really not going to do anything other than put you in a bad mood. And you don't want to road rage on the way to Starbucks. Right? Okay. So that's a little bit about me. Um, I have some amazing people on here. And I totally saw um kelly on here she's one of my awesome team managers allison just joined she's one of my awesome team managers so um i'm pumped for them to be a part of this journey with me too and they're going to be in puerto vallarta so today i wanted to talk i know some of you have watched my video before but this for me is like so life-changing when i think about this analogy and when i explain it so um I know that some of us have been awesome recruiters in the past, and maybe that's changed a little bit based on our belief about where we are in our current business, where the company's going, maybe the product, whatever it might be. But I'm here to tell you that there are still people out there that want you to ask them to be on your team. 
There are still people out there that need an opportunity like this, that need the sisterhood, that need to feel wanted, that need to be recognized. There is still um, people out there that need this opportunity. So if we are not asking, that is selfish, first of all. So sorry if you hate me for saying that, but it's selfish. Um, I hear people all the time say it's so much harder than it was in like 2014 and 2015. Well, you know what, you guys? It's not 2014 or 15. It is 2017, and we have an opportunity to take this business with Elizabeth to 500 million. But we can't do that if we are just constantly thinking about the fish jumping in our boat in 2014 and 15. Yes, our teams grew. Yes, our teams were crazy and growing so fast. But at the end of the day, were we really servicing our teams like we should be and like building them and growing them? Maybe not because some of them aren't here anymore. So we have an opportunity from today forward to just kick some butt, talk to every person we know, be super intentional about our recruiting conversations and help people see that this opportunity is the best and what it can do for them. So I want to show you guys my card. It's, I feel like a magician. <laughs> my card trick. And it's not really a trick, but I want to kind of lay it out for you guys. So there are 52 cards in a deck. And every person has their own deck of cards. Um, so it's kind of weird and random, but my I've personally recruited since I started um, in 2014. I just looked this morning. 53 personal recruits. So literally, I've recruited my deck of cards. And it is so crazy when I think about this analogy because I think it's really reigns true. A lot of the people that I currently have in leadership didn't come from my deck of cards. They didn't come from like me personally recruiting them. Like Kelly and Allison are on here, um, and Letitia and Abby. I don't know if they're on right now, but they are. They were never my level ones. They were my level three at one point, and if those people were still here, like Kelly and Allison would be my level like five and six. So they came from other people's decks of cards. So keep that in mind as I kind of explain this. So. Um, Recruiting is like pulling cards. And I know that sounds like I'm, you know, grouping people in numbers and I'm being a jerk, but hear me out. So if you're going to pull cards, like when you first start, you're like, oh, great. Yes, I recruited a nine. So nine might be, it's middle of the cards, right? This person, if they're a nine, they might um, love the product. They might have a goal, like they want a boob job or they want to pay off a credit card or student loan or their car or something. They have some sort of goal with Jamberry. So they might work Jamberry until they hit that goal and then they might um, fizzle out or they might just kind of stay level. You know, maybe these are your $500 a monthers, but maybe they don't build a huge team, but this person, they're probably going to build some sort of team with their own deck of cards. So then we have um, a 10. I promise I shuffled these. Um, so this person, similar to a nine, they might be a rock star for a while. They might be a rock star with you for like two years. They might build a team um, and their team will eventually maybe have leaders in it. Then you recruit a four. This is my, this is my hobbyist. This is my person, or maybe not even my hobbyist. This is my person who um, I personally recruit and they give me, um, they add $200 to our team TRV every single month. Great, right? We need all of these cards to really have that successful team and to get to where we want to go. So then we get a two. This is my hobbyist. This is my person that might be a kidnapper. They might be a person who um, just joins for the discount, right? This would be kind of what we would consider maybe that preferred customer, someone that wants that discount. They love the product. So we are still recruiting, right? And then I got a king and I'm like, yeah, this person wants to build the business with me. They are so pumped. This is my next team manager, people. This is my next team manager. They, um, I can feel it. They want to build a big team and they're going to start using their deck of cards and this person is going to recruit and team build without you having to help them, right? You're like, I want so many kings and queens and aces. Um, so 
Then we get a Jack and this person face cards, they still want leadership. This person is your like premier. They're your um, senior lead consultant that hits and maintains every single month. They see the value of recruiting. They see the value in team building. They see your vision as a leader. You want those Jacks, right? So then we get a six. This person still, they put in every single month. They're like your steady eddies. We get an eight. Just like the nine, they team build a little bit here and there. Maybe this person hits their fast starts and they're adding to your TRV. And we get a 10. We're pumped. They want to work the business. Eight, steady eddies. We're building TRV with all these people. We're building our team and a 10. So I have not even pulled an ace yet. Look at two more. So I get another team builder, another business builder. And then I hit my jackpot, right? I hit my ace. And this person is like you. You guys, I feel like, are aces in people's recruiting decks. Um, you have these big goals. You have these big aspirations. These are people that see the vision of earning the trip. They see the vision of wanting to team build, wanting to change people's lives, um, building a business. They can see what it does for their family. And these are the go-getters that kicks some ass, excuse my French, every single month without anyone holding their hand, without anyone telling them that um, they have to. Yes, 100%, Allison. You are an ace. Kelly is an ace for sure. But you know what? These aces, you only have sometimes four in your deck. So if you are helping your team, which is all of these people find their aces, they will eventually become your ace, right? Because that's just how direct sales works. But look how many people I went through and I recruited and I talked to and I built them up and I, you know, trained them. I'm training all of these people over here to be pumped, to be passionate, I'm talking to them about their why, I'm helping them learn parties, before I find maybe the person who just kicks butt and does it on their own. So how many people is that? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 people. Do you know what happens before we find our ace? People quit before they find their 12, these 12 people. But in this 12 people, how you have some good people, you guys. Look at all these 10s. Hold on. You still have all of these tens and face cards with this ace. These would be good legs. These would be team builders. But for the most part, people quit before they even find their first jack. Look at all of these people. These are lives changed. Remember, oh, I missed a 10. Remember I said this nine, they might want a goal to hit a goal and then they're out. But maybe they change their mind and they grow into a jack. And they see the vision in the business after they get in. Shoot, I was this four. I was the person that just wanted a discount and to hit my fast starts. And I turned into an ace. So there's no reason why these people can't turn into those team builders. But I want you guys to see how many people you need to be recruiting to build your team. And eventually, maybe those three face cards will find a different opportunity. It happens. Maybe they'll find that this isn't for them. Maybe they'll find um, that life's changed. Um, maybe, you know, they win the lottery or whatever. I don't know. Um, and then you end up with this. And then maybe these three people drop out. I think I picked four cards. So look at the size of your team now. You went from 13 to however many I have. And then this two is like, you know, I did my year. I didn't make my $600. Not really into it anymore. Um, this four is like, no, it's not for me. And now you're like, holy cow. Welcome to 2017. Now I have five people. So if you aren't constantly adding more people to your team who want this opportunity, you will not be moving forward. And sometimes what happens is people get their ace 
first or second. They get this ace person in their like fast start period. And then they're like, I'm good. I got my ace. She's killing it. I got my leg. They're awesome. I'm just going to, you know, add some people here and there. And then that person passes you and takes their TRV with you. And you're like, what just happened? <laughs> that ace is still there, but you haven't also been working your personal business. So um, let me go back and just make sure. I'm checking. Yeah, you guys, I think a lot of us were twos and threes, so you can't count them out. And that's why oh, that's why it's so important. Um, you know, if you were in Punta Cana, Johnny talked about that we've not been the greatest at onboarding. You know, the fish aren't jumping in our boat anymore, so we have to take more time. And you never know if that two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever, that they're eventually gonna turn into a face card or they're eventually gonna turn into an ace if they see the vision, right? And then people's lives change. Like I've had girls where they started as just um, a product user and then their husband lost his job and they're like, well, now I need extra money, so help me to figure this out now. But when I wanna be like his girlfriend, we had this conversation, you know, if you were, you wanna, you, you wanna say to them, if you were working your business or if you would've joined, you know, a couple months ago, you would have already had your business built for this terrible thing to happen. And you would have had kind of um, a second, like a plan B. So I really like to ask people, what is your plan B? Everyone. Oh, I don't need a plan B. Okay, well, I am here to tell you that bad things happen in life and unexpected things happen in life. And sometimes you need a plan B. Yeah, so Tiffany said, my ace quit, but since I kept recruiting, I have been able to maintain team manager. 100%. So I will say those people who um, are consistently, so let's say, let's say this is the amount of people I've recruited so far to date, but this many people have left. Guys, if I am still adding one person a month, one person that it can be huge for your team for your pay get five percent extra when you they're in their fast start period um so one recruit a month 12 people so if i were to pick the next 12 cards so let's say from here forward so by april of 2018 i will have recruited one person a month that will give me this amount of people. So, you know, maybe I have one person who they hit their fast start without me even helping. But just like so many of you said, you were twos and threes and fours when you got started. If I pay a little bit of attention to these people and show them the value of this opportunity and how it can fit into their life individually, there's no telling if these people will all turn into leaders or lead consultants. What's the number they always say? $200 in 2008 would have been life-changing money and allowed like that hundreds of thousands of people to stay out of bankruptcy. $200. So I think um, a lot of times we as leaders, we see the big number, right? We see, I need to hit this amount of dollars to um, make this amount of income or to meet my goal and so we automatically assume that everyone must want a thousand dollars a month or 900 or between seven and 900 which is you know team manager pay ish ish um, we assume that everyone wants that because for me I'm like who wouldn't want that but not everyone does so if we are helping them to achieve their goal, whether it be 100, whether it be 50, whether it be 300, great. Like I love, um, Tracy uh, said, I don't want to incentivize $200 a month because I feel like that's the minimum and I feel like my girls are better than the minimum. 
And I 100% agree with that. Like $50 a month is $200 in sales, 50-ish. Um, if they're wanting to get to that $200 of income a month, they either need to be pulling out their deck of cards or they need to be selling 500. So how can we help them increase that, which is gonna increase our average PRV, which is gonna increase our team total, which is gonna increase activity, which is gonna increase excitement. Um, but with that being said, even if people are here for $200 a month, you don't know who they know. If you are um, trying to find, let's say their deck is set up like this, Maybe they don't want to work the business, but you help show them that this opportunity could be life-changing for people. Who do they know that might really need this opportunity, be great at this opportunity, or that they want to do this opportunity with? And the first card they pull is this. One, that's going to make them money in the short term, right? Even if they just have a goal of selling three or $400 a month. But ultimately, this is also going to help you. So my point there being is that everyone on your team has a deck of cards and we, I don't believe, are utilizing our team's deck of cards. I don't think we're talking about it as much anymore, whether it be our belief in ourselves, our belief in our own recruiting. Um, I don't know, I don't know. But I even, like I feel like I'm a great recruiter, but I even can say as a leader, I don't talk to every single person on my team enough about their deck of cards and what it could do and the value it could provide to their friends and family. So if you have people or you as a leader are selling, you know, $1,000 to $2,000 a month, which most of you should be if you're here, because um, 700 you know, that's the minimum. Even if you're selling 700 if you're selling just 700 to your VIPs, you will have a hell of a time recruiting and pulling your deck of cards. Because you're talking to the same 20 to 50 people a month. It's all about getting in front of new people. These are not gonna come from your friends, your families, and your VIPs. They might, sporadically, but I will tell you that these are all gonna come from networking, from parties, from new customers, from referrals, from getting out of your comfort zone. I'm just gonna throw that out there. So if you feel like you are having a hard time as a leader finding new people, get in front of new people. Have parties with the intention of meeting new people to jo like have them join your business. Don't have parties to think about sales. If you are getting your $700 a month from your VIPs, awesome, shout out to you, I do not do that. Um, I get like a couple hundred, but even then, Let's say you get your $700, you get, you get them from your VIPs. Great. Have the mentality of every single party you're going to have from the month then. That's going to be a party for you to intentionally meet people, to create relationships with them, to add, your, add them to your team. Like my goal, and I always say this, and I say it as a joke, but I'm halfway serious. I'm like, that girl doesn't know it, but she's going to be on my team. She doesn't know it yet but she's going to be on my team. And I feel like when you have, like when they're, when you find someone good, if you have that kind of mentality, you're not going to be annoying. Don't be annoying about it, but create a relationship with that person. You know, tell them you think they're awesome and tell them you would love to do this with them. Um, I think that's totally fine, but you have to get in front of more people. So let me just go through the comments really quick and then I'm out of here. Yeah, so Kelsey, totally. So the one thing that I always think about is what do I think about when I go to bed? And I always try to reflect on this too, is I never think about, I mean, every now and then, but it's usually because I have an event coming up, but every now and then I'll be like, what kind of Manny do I want to wear tomorrow? Or um, what should I order? Should I order all the Wonder Woman wraps? Should I only order a couple? Which ones will I wear? Those thoughts normally don't go through my head at night, nor do they of your customers. But what does is, how am I going to pay for that $200 book that I need for next quarter? 
how am I going to be able to tell my kid, no, they can't do karate because we can't afford it? Like, what lame excuse am I going to give them? Um, how am I going to be able to afford my cell phone bill so that I can continue to be a Jamboree leader? Um, all of these things that are like financially, like all of the struggles that people have, those are what they think about when they go to bed. And those are what we have a opportunity for. So everyone has different reasons why they do this and everyone's used their money in different capacities. But it all comes down to, I've never met someone that doesn't need extra money. You guys, even rich people who are like set, they could literally retire today, they still think about money. They think about what extra residual income could they bring in to lessen the burden or to be able to spend more. It doesn't matter if they're you're buying a Honda Civic, new, little minivan for your family, or you're buying a Lamborghini. People think about where their money is coming from, how they can get more, in some capacity. So, that's my rant about um, recruiting. But do this with your team. Just pull out a deck of cards and be like, hey girls, like I want to show you something. Um, you know, I know some of you are discouraged. Because we get discouraged because we pull like, you know, a two, three, four, and five in a row. And then we're like, well, this isn't for us. We just want to give up. We're going to go sell whatever, whatever other company. Newsflash, it's just going to be as hard as the, at the other company. But at the other company, you might pull an ace first, and then you pull a two, three, four, five, and six. And initially, you're like, yeah, I'm killing it over here at this other company. But really, in reality, you haven't changed your behaviors because you're still going to give up after you pull a four, five, and six. So those are some things to think about as you are recruiting, is that next person that you talk to about the opportunity could be your next 10 jack, queen, king, or ace. You don't know if you aren't asking. So um, if you guys have any questions about this, let me know. I did do a video about it a long time ago. Um, so if you want to share that with your team, you, I can post the link below. Um, or you can take this live and share it on your team page. But if you guys have any questions, let me know. And I'm kind of on like a recruiting tangent terror right now, creating different videos around different topics. And you guys, I will tell you, if you are struggling with something yourself, train on it. Because you have to become the expert. You have to practice what you're preaching. And you learn way better if you are um, educating and teaching others. So if you feel like you are um, feeling low in a certain area, whether it's bookings, recruiting, sales, whatever it is, Find someone who's great at it, work together, become the expert, and then train on it. Like, train your team. So, have a great day. Yeah, Joanna, feel free to um, share this, or I'll take this video, and I'll put it on YouTube, and then you guys can have the link to share out. That would make it probably easier. So, have a great day.